Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for uh, gathering uh, in the evening. And I'm sorry for having kept you waiting for a while uh, because of the uh, prolonged uh, the previous meetings uh, all the briefers attended. Uh, my name is, is Kamoshida Nawaki. I'm the director for International Press Division uh, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and I'll serve as uh, a moderator for today's press conference. Uh, the simultaneous translation is provided, uh, so please tune in channel 1 for Japanese and channel 2 for English. Uh, first, let me introduce today's briefers. Uh, next to me is um, Mr. Noda Hiroyuki from the Cabinet Secretariat. He's Councillor, uh, Coordination Office of Measures on Emerging Infectious Diseases. We have uh, Noda san, Councillor, Coordination Office of Measures on Emerging Infectious Diseases of the Cabinet Secretariat. And uh, from the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, uh, we have Mr. Sahara Ayasuyuki, a Senior Assistant Minister for Global Health. Uh, from the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, we have with us Sahara Yasuyuki, a Senior Assistant Minister for Global Health. Uh, director, uh, Department of Health Crisis Management, National Institute of Public Health. Uh, Saito Tomoya. Saito Tomoya san, Director, Department of Health Crisis Management, National Institute of Public Health. Da Toshiyuki, Director of the Environmental Health and Food Safety Planning Division. Uh, so that Suda Toshiyuki san, Director, Environmental Health and Food Safety Planning Division. Suho, or Director, Office of Global Health Corporation, International Affairs Division. Taguchi Kazuho san, Director, Office of Global Health Corporation, International Affairs Division. And, and Mr. Kato Takuma, Director, uh, Measures on Novel Influenza Control Office. Uh, Kato Takuma, Shingata Influenza. Ta Kato Takuma san, Director, Measures on Novel Influenza Control Office. From the Immigration Services Agency, here with us uh, Mr. Umehara uh, Yoshihiro, or Deputy Director of the Inspection Division. Umehara Yoshihiro-san is the Deputy Director, Inspection Division of the Immigration Services Agency. In affairs, uh, we have Mr. Ozaki Sotaro, uh, who is a counselor at the uh, Japanese Embassy in South Africa, but uh, currently assisting in the Consular Affairs Bureau. Ozaki uh, Sotaro is now in Tokyo uh, and He's a counselor of the South African Embassy, but currently helping us out at the Counselor Affairs Bureau. This conference is given on the record, so you can quote the name and the title of the briefer. Briefers. So today is con press conference is about the uh, responses to the novel uh, coronavirus diseases, and first. Um, I will ask uh, colleagues from the uh, Ministry of Health, Welfare and Labor about the uh, status of infection and the PR PCR testing. Then also uh, I will ask uh, our relevant colleagues to explain about the uh, border control measures um, main, uh, from the Immigration Services Agency, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Health. And also oh, we will hear explanation from the Cabinet Secretariat about the uh, Special Measures Act. Then I will open the floor for questions. Uh, and when you ask questions, please raise your hand and uh, specify your name and affiliation before asking a question. So now I would like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Sahara to uh, make intro introductory remarks. Good 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for being here this evening. I will very briefly update you on the general situation. As of yesterday, domestically, the number of domestic patients was 488 PCR positive patients. The number was 488. In the past couple of days, or for more than one week, we have been seeing increase. But although there has been fluctuation, but on average, we are detecting 30 cases per day. That's the rate of increase on daily basis, on average. On February the 24th, the novel coronavirus response experts meeting was held and on that day the experts gave the following opinion which was shared with you at the previous briefing at that stage they were saying the following in japan the crucial timing would be the next one or two weeks and that would determine whether there would be rapid increase of a spread or whether the outbreak will be concluded and end. And since various measures have been implemented in Japan and uh, the number was just mentioned by myself, but again, the experts meeting was held yesterday and the opinion of the experts at yesterday's meeting was as follows. As of yesterday, the Japanese situation cannot be described as explosive outbreak or spread of infection to a certain extent. The spread of infection is being controlled. However, it is not possible to relax the level of monitoring and caution. So this evening, I would like to describe the situation. This is the situation we are in, but there we are discovering clusters where we find concentrated infection in certain localities. And at the beginning, I would like to explain to you the situation of clusters. After that, we will take up the situation of PCR tests. Last week on Friday, since Friday, this became subject to the public medical insurance system. So it's under insurance coverage, and I will speak about that later on. And after PCR tests, uh, as was explained by the moderator, uh, border measures will be explained not just by our ministry, but uh, MOFA as well as the Immigration Services Agency shall also take the floor. And at the end, the Special Measures Act on Pandemic Influenza will be described. To a certain extent, the outbreak has been under control, but crisis management is all about assuming the worst case scenario to be well prepared. So based upon that kind of worst scenario assumption, we are planning to have legislation in place. So that will be taken up. Uh, as the final item of the presentation. To begin with, uh, first of all, the spread of infection in Japan. Uh, Dr. Saito will take the floor. I'm Tomoya Saito from National Institute of Public Health. And now I work for the uh, Cluster ta Response Task Force in the Minister of Health headquarter for responding to uh, COVID-19. And let me briefly uh, describe the epidemiological situation and the, uh, our work on the cluster response task force. Uh, as of yesterday, I, um, uh, we ha I have a little bit updated number compared to Dr. Sahara previously mentioned. We have 498 cases, including asymptomatic cases. And I'd like to let you know that uh, we published the uh, English ma uh, the map uh, plotted, which has the number of the patient in each uh, areas. 
each prefectures, and this is access can be accessed through the uh, uh, MHOW's website, the English page, and it will be daily updated. The number here, the 446, is the uh, symptom the symptomatic cases. So, and the one uh, the 498 minus 52 here is a 446. This is a symptomatic patient. This uh, figure will be updated daily. And the uh, we have the we have found uh, at least one patient in 34 prefectures. And age distribution of the uh, cases are mostly in 40s to 70s. And we have several young cases, uh, less than 10 or 10 to 90s, but it's very limited, uh, very limited. And the uh, se severe cases are mostly in the age of seven, more than 60, but we have some severe cases in even in uh, uh, younger ages. And the um, as Dr. Sahala mentioned, the number of patients is increasing, but it's very slowly. It's not explosively. So uh, we are taking a very good control measures at this moment. And we understand that in the early 100, in the uh, analysis of one, early 100 cases, most cases does not infect others, and but some infects more than five and they form the cluster, so-called cluster. So uh, at this moment, uh, we have identified the nine major clusters. It's shown in your uh, handouts here, mapped out like this. And some uh, clusters are still ongoing, and but some are already uh, all the uh, stamped out, and we have not seen the patients uh, last two weeks. And he, um, so to uh, to contain these clusters, we dispatch some assistant team, uh, including the expert of the epidemiological investigation, to six prefectures, uh, to Hokkaido, Chiba, Kanagawa, Aichi, Osaka, and Kochi prefectures. So our strategy is to is the cr so-called cluster-focused approach, and you know the uh, our we assume that the linkage of these clusters is and the link the, the chain of clusters is the uh, uh, behind the scene of this current epidemic. So our uh, the resources are more focused to the containing the clusters to control the epidemic. So uh, by uh, through the uh, epidemiological investigation in the field, uh, we trace the contacts and we identify the source of infections and intervene the sources or the um, and try to to stamp out the linkages between the clusters. And our work is also to identify the risk factors of places where the uh, large spread may likely occur. And the, we identified the three factors. This was mentioned in the, uh, yesterday in the expert committee. But one is the closed and the uh, unventilated environment. The second is a closed contact. And third is the um, the the people where uh, where the people um, have a conversation or singing, these three factors are the uh, risk factors in the environment to make a cluster. So uh, we allowed we are allowing uh, people to avoid such factors since last week. So uh, that's our current activities on the uh, cluster focused approach. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to address the, the PCR tests, the new approach to P PCR tests. Allow me to give you some explanation. Uh, 
as a material you can we have distributed to you two sheets of paper first please refer to the page one PCR testing system for novel coronavirus covered by medical insurance please refer to this document you can find points the first point the public health center, if a public center decides, health center decides that the patient is out of the scope of administrative testing, doctors can request the test directly to testing institutes with their own decision. Last Friday, since March 5th, the, under the Japanese public medical insurance, PCR tests can be performed. So in the past, the consultation with public health center was necessary and when the doctor deemed it necessary then the PCR test was performed but from March 5th consultation with the public health center is not necessary anymore the private testing institutes can perform a PCR test once the doctor makes a decision that the PCR test is necessary so fully the reliance on the doctor's professional judgment. Then the second bullet, for the purpose of preventing in-hospital infection and ensuring the accuracy of the testing, the test is required to be conducted at outpatient facilities for Japanese returnees and potential contacts. I think this is a very important issue. At all the f medical issue, uh, f facilities, the conducting PCR tests would not be appropriate. That is our line of thinking. The medical facilities have elderly people, those people who have underlying diseases, or the cancer patients, various kinds of people are there in those medical facilities. So such people and those people who have, who have come to be examined for the possible coronavirus infection, we would like to do them separately, address them separately. And we thought that was necessary. So regarding these tests, and it used to be so in, in the past as well. The, the, there are about 900 medical facilities that have outpatient facilities for Japanese returnees and potential contacts. So they were the professional facilities to handle them. Where can you find these outpatient facilities with regard to such information? Although this is not disclosed to the general public, uh, above the outpatient facilities, you can find the call center for Japanese returnees and potential contacts. So please call this call center for Japanese returnees and potential contacts. And then the your nearby medical facilities will be given to you by the call center. And in advance, you are expected to make a phone call to outpatient facilities and make an appointment with the outpatient facilities so that these medical facilities, clinic, or hospital can be well prepared before having a patient. And we would like to continue to handle the patients in this way. Uh, we, the third bullet point. Moreover, the efforts will be made to expand the number of tests to be conducted with the insurance coverage, taking into account future improvement in the preparedness of the private sectors. The private testing institutes will be are encouraged to participate to perform PCR tests. So the number of facilities, institutes who can handle the PCR test, we would like to see the increase of those institutes. And of course, the private testing institutes were part of the picture, but from last Friday, with the uh, doctor's the judgment, we are now having a more flexible system. And as for the private testing institutes, the capacity as a whole of Japan, we would like to see the increase of the capacity. Uh, please refer to the second page. Oh, the, sec the novel coronavirus test capacity and the number of cases tested. Regarding the PCL tests, the uh, capacity for the novel coronavirus test, you can see that it has been on the increase. 
You can find the line graph on the bottom. That's the number of tests performed on a day-to-day -day basis. You can see here the green color-coded or purple color-coded area. This shows the nationwide capacity, Japan's capacity, per day, the number of the cases that can be performed. So it shows the capacity. Last until last week, it was about four thousand, but from the beginning of this week, it, it's exceeding six thousand. That's the capacity that we have nationwide. By the end of this month, we would like to increase it to something close to seven thousand by the end of this month. Concerning the numbers, the that right. Down, down bottom, you can see this is decrease. Uh, you can see the decrease because it was the weekend. But compared with the capacity, you can see the capacity is the higher than the required number of cases. So, by having such system in place, we will be providing for opportunities for people to receive tests. Thank you for your kind attention. Shall we go on to border measures? Yes. On behalf of the Immigration Services Agency, I would like to take the floor to explain to you the border measures. My name is Umehara of the Immigration Services Agency. What I will be explaining are measures that our agency is implementing based upon the Immigration Act. Immigration Services Agency entitled one page document should have been distributed to you. Based upon the Immigration Act, these are the restrictions that we have put into place. There are three subject groups to which we are implementing these measures. Uh, going on from the first bullet point, foreign nationals who visited certain places within 14 days before the date of arrival in Japan will be denied entry into our country. The specific locations subject to this measure is indicated. Some provinces of China, Hubei province and Zhejiang province, and certain cities of Republic of Korea, including Daegu Metropolitan City, and certain provinces of Iran, three provinces of Iran. If the person stayed in any of these areas within 14 days before the date of arrival in Japan, they would be denied entry. Next point. Next bullet point. Holders of a passport of the People's Republic of China issued in either Hubei or Zhejiang province will be denied entry into Japan. The final bullet point, foreign nationals who boarded the Westerdam that left Hong Kong and disembarked the vessel will be denied entry into Japan. These measures are in place. Westerdam was tra traveling towards Japan to enter into Japan in early February, and there is suspicion of outbreak of novel coronavirus on the ship, and that is why we've taken the third measure. And these are the three groups of people to whom we are denying entry, but if there are exceptional circumstances, we are granting them entry rights. More specifically, for the first group of people on the first bullet point, for example, sorry, the second bullet point, Hubei, Zhejiang province issued passport holders 
คือเราไม่ได้วิสิตในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เราเคยไปในพื้นที่ที่เรา That concludes my explanation on the border measures uh, implemented by the Impl Immigration Services Agency. So, t a r o z a k i and I am currently working in the uh, Consular uh, Bureau of Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, I will uh, explain to you the new uh, visa restriction measures. Uh, last Friday, uh, the Japanese government made uh, the cabinet agreement on further governmental measures to drastically strengthen border measures. Uh, these measures were decided to continue implementing flexi flexible border controls without hesitations uh, at this extremely critical time uh, amid the further spreading of infections in foreign countries. So the measures include following uh, visa restrictions. The number one is that uh, the validity of single visa or multiple entry visa issued by March 8th by Japanese embassies or consulate general in China, including Hong Kong and Macau, or the Republic of Korea. And the, uh, the validity of these visas was already suspended from Uh, the beginning of this uh, week. And the second uh, measure is that the visa exemption measures hon for Hong Kong and Macau and the Republic of Korea uh, was also suspended from the beginning of this week. These uh, measures uh, will last until the last day of the month, March. Sorry. But, uh, the, the, but the, this period may be renewed. So the consequences the, of these measures are following people will not be permitted to enter Japan uh, from this week. Namely, the first category is that uh, those are the people who intend to enter Japan with, with single or multiple visa issued by March 8th. By Japanese embassies or consulate general in China or the Republic of Korea, because as, as I said, the validity of these uh, visas uh, was uh, suspended. And the second uh, category that uh, people who possesses a passport issued by Hong Kong or Macau uh, or the Republic of Korea and they intended to intend to enter Japan without obtaining a visa. Because, as I've said, visa exemption measures for Hong Kong, Macau, and for the Republic of Korea was also suspended. So please check regularly uh, our uh, homepage uh, of Minister of Foreign Affairs. Thank you very much. I'm with the MHLW since yesterday, 9th of March, up to 31st of March. Those who arrive in airport or vessel to Japan from China or Korea are requested two things. First of all, those who arrive from China or Korea by plane or by vessel, regardless of nationality, we are requesting them to stay at a place designated by the quarantine station chief for 14 days. This applies to people who are staying for longer than 14 days, like 20 weeks, and we're asking them to stay at the place for 14 days. But for those who are planning to stay only for a couple of days, they are asked to stay in that designated place for only the duration of their stay. And the second request is not to use public transport. So those are the requests offered by the quarantine station of Japan. That's it. Thank you.
I'm from the Cabinet Secretariat, and this morning uh, there was Cabinet agreement on the amendment of the Special Measures Act for Pandemic Influenza, which will be submitted to the Diet. Special Measures Act on Pandemic Influenza and New Infectious Diseases Preparedness and Response is an already existing act. Ten years ago, in 2009, there was the Pandemic Influenza pandemic, and this act was enacted based upon the lessons learned from that experience. The overview of the act is described in the one-page leaflet in English that has been distributed to you. This covers pandemic influenza and new infectious diseases. At normal times, the act would require the formulation of action plans and stockpiling of supply and goods and implementation of border control measures. And when there is a declaration of emergency situation, after that, the emergency measures can be taken. That's stipulated in this act. Regarding the emergency measures, let me describe some of them. In principle, when the governor of prefecture that sees a large uh, the spread of the disease he, he receives a certain authority, requesting people to refrain from going out, the, and also the requesting the uh, holding uh, the, uh, and the issuing an order to restrict the holding of events, the emergency permission for the use of temporary medical facilities, extending the expiration date of licenses, for instance, driver's license. So by requesting and issuing an order to restrict the holding of events, the uh, extending the expiration date of driver's license becomes also possible under the Act. So, with regard to those special measures, the private rights are restricted in certain cases. So the judicious and careful the uh, operation is necessary. In terms of the system of this law or act, from the MHL, the minister, the to the Prime Minister, the, the occurrence of infectious disease is reported to the PM, and the headquarters they are established to address that issue. And after that, this a declaration emergency situation is made. For instance, if the disease is serious and uh, nationwide the uh, rapid spread is observed to the lives of the people, to the national economy, the impact is held, or uh, there's a risks of impact in the people's lives or the national economy, then the declaration of emergency situation is made. At each stage or each phase, experts' inputs are gathered, and then the uh, judgment is made. So step by step, very steadily, the uh, judicious decision is made. That much is stipulated in this act. Previously, the, as you heard from the MHLW, in terms of epidemiological situation here in Japan, the explosive spread of the disease is not the observed. The, we are still holding up to a certain extent. La yesterday, the expert meeting was held, and that was their opinion. That being the case, regarding this act, regarding this uh, the new in terms of the, our preparedness for the uh, new coronavirus, the uh, infectious disease. So 
this is for the preparedness. As for the minister in charge here, last week, Minister Nishimura became the minister in charge starting next week at the parliament in the national diet. He's addressing the matter. At the risk of repeating myself concerning this act, as I said at the outset, novel coronavirus and uh, new di infectious diseases were the scope of this, but with the revision of the measure, the uh, new coronavirus infectious disease d should be uh, falling into the scope. That's the uh, background of the submission of this bill to the parliament. Uh, the deliberations in the diet will follow. And in the diet, if the bill is passed, still the, at each phase and each step, experts' input will be gathered and the measures will be the, uh, made at each stage. So th these are the uh, procedures for the uh, future, the, for the future. And I hope you will understand that. Thank you for your kind attention. These are the updates uh, about uh, the status of infection, PCR testing, uh, border measures, and the Special Measures Act uh, from the relevant ministries and agencies. Now, I would like to uh, open the floor for questions, but uh, uh, when you ask a question, uh, please uh, raise your hand and uh, please use a microphone because we are using the translation and say your name and affiliation. The floor is open. Uh, Ms. Rich. Uh, thank you for holding this briefing. I'm Motoko Rich from the New York Times. I think this question is for Sahara-san. Um, I'm looking at this chart about testing, and we've asked at the last two briefings about the increase in capacity, which this shows, but it doesn't show much of an increase of actual testing. So I'm wondering if given that even though the increase in cases is only an average of 30 a day, um, that's against a backdrop of um, 